Hi ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I'm a little under the weather. <laughs> Got a little bit of a cold. But uh, I thought it was time for a little bit of information here, at least from my point of view. Uh, I, as you notice, I put uh, uh, post a sentry, uh, lock and load, uh, the video I made several months ago as the featured video. And I'm doing it because, you know, we really need to be prepared to defend ourselves. You see what's happening to the people in Connecticut, in New York, Maryland, California, and in other places. In regards to the Second Amendment, of course it's all, all of these attacks everywhere on the Bill of Rights. I'm not saying that we need to get offensive. Well, there are people that'll do that eventually because we may not have any other choice, but most of us, we just need to stand our ground, be in non-compliance, resist, refuse to obey the unlawful orders and dictates of this tyranny that's upon us in as, in as much a non-violent form as we can. But when they come for you, when they come for your family, when they come for your property, you have a right and a responsibility, a duty to defend your rights. That's what a right means. It's a responsibility, an ability to respond, and I've said that before. Not just for yourself, but to be able to respond to those who need your help. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is do I think that all Americans are worth the sacrifice to try to, to protect the Bill of Rights and the Constitution? No. Most of them don't deserve a dime or a moment's consideration from us. But the principles upon which we stand do. And I would hope that we do that, because that's the only hope that our children, our grandchildren, our posterity will have. And, and I think God, in his wisdom, showing us the importance of life, liberty, and all of those things that I've talked about are important, and they're, and they're worth standing up for. So I'm just saying that that's the reason why I put that up there, to be ready, as the Minutemen were in old times, to defend the innocent. And that's really what it's about, from tyrants or from criminals. And sometimes they're the same thing. So please look at that video if you would like. Uh, I wanted to also talk real quick about the Ukrainian situation. Yes, I'm looking into the sun, so I'm squinting pretty badly. You know, come on, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen it in Vietnam. We've seen it in Syria. We've seen it in Libya. We've seen it in Iraq. Everywhere. The same, the same storyline, just tweaked a little bit for a new situation. It's all the same. Information's come out recently, and I, you know, I haven't verified it yet. And people will make some, some comments about the fact that I haven't verified it. But you know, when it's a duck, it's a duck, right? And and you see these these lies coming out of the administration, out of the ma mainstream media, and it's obvious to us. It's the same storyline, time after time after time. And the same thing is going on in Ukraine, as I've already said. It's very likely that the, the elected government that decided it didn't want the EU was actually attacked by neo-Nazi elements that were supported by the West, very similarly to the way the Syrian government and the Libyan government were attacked by Al-Qaeda groups supported by the West. It's all about getting people into the international banking system. What did they take when they went into Syria, into Libya? What was the first thing they grabbed? Muammar Gaddafi's personal gold? <laughs> Come on, ladies and gentlemen, it's all in front of you. The takedown of Cyprus, all right? The intent to do that throughout the EU. And, and people in the right mind will join the EU to allow them th their wealth to be stolen from them for, for a little reprieve for a year or so, or however long they have. Not a long video here, but I just wanted to make sure that I went on record. I sent out a video to some friends the other day, you know, uh, Pastor uh, Manning, he's a black man, pastor, made an impassioned plea. You might go on YouTube and look at it. It's called Revolution or Martial Law. Uh, and thank you, the lady that sent that to me, thank you very much. I want to say thank you for keeping me up to date on these things. I have a lot of respect for, I mean, Pastor Manning, you know, uh, he, he's a southern preacher, the southern black type preacher that uh, uh, has a song in his voice when he talks. But he, like Lieutenant Colonel Alan West and Dr. Ben Carson, have my deepest respects. 
Uh, it may be a little, he may be a little rough around the edges, but his, his message is good. I don't really know much about him. I don't think he's a provocateur. But even if he is, and I'm, I'm not saying that, Dr. Manning, I'm not saying that at all, but the point is that your message is appreciated. I wish more of the United States citizenry would stand up and say the type of things that you are. You know, a lot of us try to stand in the in the shadows and just try to weather it through. And yes, even I have said, just get out of the way. But you still have to stand up at some point, and you have, sir, and I appreciate it. I don't believe that we can expect that this government, this federal government of the United States is going to survive. You know, we see the secession movements, we see all of these things happening in the states to, to go against the federal government, and rightly so. But the federal government's not going to give up, and it's going to be a destructive thing in the end. They're going to hold on to power because that's where the elite has their, their bets, you know what I'm saying? So they're willing to destroy the rest of us to keep what they have. Central government will fall. I am totally convinced of that. But what comes out on the other side is going to depend on each and every person making a decision between do I support this or do I support this. In other words, making a choice. It's that time, and, I, and you've heard me say that before. All right. Uh, I'll probably follow this up again a little later. I'm just, like I say, a little under the weather today. I want to especially the people I sent the emails to, to know that, you know, I'm not talking about going out and committing violence. I'm talking about defending yourselves against any violent attempt upon you by this evil and corrupt, tyrannical government. Even Ted Cruz says to abolish the IRS. And no, I don't find any, <laughs> any satisfaction in any of the politicians, be they Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, any of them, uh, former Senator Kucinich. But when they say the right things, I want to thank them for it. And hopefully it'll open, up, open the eyes of all of us to see what's happening here. And that's really what we need to do, to be aware, to be observant. Because when we observe, when we keep our eyes open, the watchman on the tower, we are planting for ourselves a place in the cosmos, the, 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 the cosmic memory. And I know that sounds new age, but God talks about remembrance, the putting back together of things as they're supposed to be, the remembering of things that were dismembered. That's really what resurrection is. Family systems, individual bodies, individual spirits. And a little insertion here, be wary of what politicians and your supposed leaders want to get you involved with, especially when it involves the destruction of other peoples, of other men, women, and children. Don't, don't just get sucked into this under some patriotic thing. You know, be wary like you were about the thing in Syria. I'm not saying that what's going on in Ukraine is right, but when you realize how this thing got started with our own provocateuring to try to cause this problem in the first place in the and the fact that we actually unseated the elected government there and very likely used neo-Nazis to do it, it kind of changes things. Just be wary. Look at everything. Don't be deceived. The world is full of deceptions and lies. And like I've said before, the first casualty of war is truth. Defend ourselves, yes. Defend the innocent. Outside of our own borders, maybe. Only under certain very stringent circumstances. But this whole thing about national security is a joke. It's gone way too far. Everything is justified under that umbrella. Renounce war. Proclaim peace. And you people in the churches, you pastors, you reverends, you, you prophets, you presidents, you, you priests, if you are not prophesying and calling, uh, prophesying about and, and calling to repentance the leaders of this nation and others, as you're supposed to do, just like Jesus did, just like Isaiah did, just like all of the true prophets and apostles did, then you are nothing more 
than agents of a corrupt corporation. I don't care if you're Mormon, president of the church, Catholic pope, Baptist preacher, whatever. It doesn't matter. If you are not prophesying and against and calling the leaders of this nation and other nations to repentance for what they're doing, you are false prophets. You are, you are false leaders. You are, you are not Christ's. You are his opponents. Enough for now.